After August 1, 1894, Japan's military might achieved a rapid succession of easy victories in land and sea battles. On September 15th, the Japanese army decisively defeated Chinese forces at Pyongyang, Korea. On September 17th, Japan's combined fleet obliterated Qing China's Beiyang fleet. And on November 22nd, the Chinese military base at Port Arthur fell to the Japanese. Japan's victory was imminent. Japan's military strategy underwent an important transformation, starting with the launch of a new southern expansion policy. On November 26th, the Japanese foreign minister wrote to the prime minister, expressing the view that, we should not miss this opportunity to flexibly use our naval and land forces to attack Shanghai Guan, Taiwan, and Weihai Wei. Subsequently, on December 4th, Prime Minister Ito issued the policy recommendation, strategy for attack on Weihai Wei and invasion of Taiwan. This marked the launching of Japan's southern expansion policy. It planned to secretly annex the Diaoyu Tais and incorporate them into Okinawa Prefecture while preparing its southward military offensives. On December 27, 1894, the Home Minister wrote a confidential memorandum, Confidential Number 133, to the Foreign Minister concerning the erection of national markers on Huangwei Island and Diaoyutai Island. Home Minister Nomura argued that because past and present conditions were different, the matter of national markers should be put to the Cabinet for a resolution. In his response, Confidential Number 2, Foreign Minister Mutsu approved this proposal. 一个月后的一月十四日，日本透过秘密内阁决议，将钓鱼台跟黄文宇片面编入冲绳县。其实在此前一天，也就是一月十三日，日本的大本营也决定编成澎湖攻略部队。很明显，明治政府的南京政策是
当时由于其境遇不甚明确，亦不经过所属之说，因此迟迟不见政府处置。适逢日清战役，依其结果，台湾侵入我国领土，该岛屿之领域也随之明朗。很明显，当时古贺氏本人以及冲绳县水产官员对于钓鱼台的来历有一致的认识，也就是日本当时是因为甲午战争战胜而取得钓鱼台列屿。Indeed, careful review of Meiji period historical documents relating to the Sino-Japanese War of 1894 to 1895. Reveal that Japan acquired the Diaoyutais, Penghu, and Taiwan as booty of war. 